I know you wanted to jump on today to talk about ways that buyers can uh, work with the, the current interest rates and lower your monthly payments and uh, where it appears that rates will be heading for the rest of the year. So that's a two-part thing. We're going to talk about what buyers can do right now to lower their monthly payments and where we believe interest rates are heading uh, for the rest of 2024. It's good stuff. So what can buyers do right now to lower the rates? Sure, absolutely. That's a great question. And as you know, um, many first-time home buyers, in particular, even repeat home buyers, they're always talking to me. Okay, well, what do we do here? How can we get our payment lower? Like we understand the market, we understand where prices are at. Interest rates, obviously, to a certain degree, are fixed. I mean, we only have so much control of what interest rates are at. The government has a lot of control. So I tell people first and foremost, you know, let's look at programs out there. I mean, obviously, you know, with a first-time home buyer, the FHA is very, very popular. Rhode Island housing, even conventional. But beyond that, I mean, sometimes what I find first is with FHA loans, the government, it's a federal government. FHA stands for Federal Housing Authority. The program that they have, typically I find interest rates are about a half percent lower in general than conventional financing. Okay. So if you're someone buying your first home, obviously looking at three and a half percent down, which is the minimum on an FHA loan, you're trying to obviously, minim you know, Keep your monthly payment as low as possible. So FHA is a way to get your rate a little lower. I mean, there are some cons with FHA. Obviously, you have, you know, the PMI never comes off, of course. But in the short term, it's a way to get a lower interest rate. That half percent difference in interest rate could translate into between 100 and 200 a month in your monthly payment alone. So all things being equal, you know, if you have to go the FHA route, sometimes that's that's the way that I recommend to first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. Also, something else is down payment. I know this is a question, you know, this is a situation where not everyone has the ability to put down more money. And in some cases, it's not even in your best interest. And let me explain what, what I mean by that. So if, in, in, in a perfect world, if you, the more you put down in theory, the lower your monthly payment would be. It makes sense. You put down more, you pay less. But in a situation where let's just say you have $50,000 to work with for a down payment. OK, and the minimum down payment, three and a half percent is, say, 20,000. You can put down the additional thirty thousand dollars on your, you know, down payment. So your monthly payment, your mortgage is lower. But you know what? Sometimes that's not the best situation. And really, what I would tell people is, okay, put down your three and a half percent. You need to put down. Take that thirty thousand and pay off high interest rate credit cards, a car payment, because the difference of thirty thousand on a mortgage might be a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars a month. But on paying off a student loan or a high interest credit card or even two cars for that matter. That could reduce your monthly debt by, say, seven, eight hundred a month. So when I say monthly payment, I mean overall monthly expenses. So that's what I say is take that money. We'll use it in a positive way. Paul, one of the questions that we have buyers asking right now are about the buy down programs, the rate buy down programs. Are those still inactive? Are those still active? Yeah, yes, correct. There are usually two one buy downs is three one buy downs. Essentially how this works is let's say, for example, you're buying a home today. Let's say the interest rate currently as is, is let's say six and a half percent. You have the ability to do a buy down program where you get a 2% reduction in year one and a 1% yep. reduction in year two. So let's just say, for example, year one is six and a half supposed to be, but with the buy down, now you're at 2% lower at four and a half and year two, you're at five and a half. The way you get, you can take this and utilize it further would be if you had a closing cost credit from a seller. You could utilize the closing cost credit to buy down the rate. So essentially you can, you know, for 12 months or 24 months or even 36 months in some cases, you can reduce your monthly payment and the money used to do that can come from a seller credit versus out of your pocket. So essentially it's almost like buying points, but it, it's, it's a, it's a more of a, it's a heavier drop on the rate for a short term. So it's a good situation right now, I think, because rates we're, we're heading in a situation where rates will go down. We're, we're, we're almost certain of this. So if you can get 12 months to kind of buy some time, you know, lower your monthly payment in the short term. And then when rates go down in 12 months, 15 months, wherever it may be, then you refinance anyway. Mm -hmm.